Inflation is here, people. Protect yourself. Hey everyone, Rosario here, and welcome to Modern Finance. Consumer price index results for June 2021 are in, and boy are things looking bad. Inflation is at 5.4%. That's the highest that it's been since 2008. And month over month, the numbers are higher than what we've seen in 30 years. That means that on average, everything costs over 5% more this year than it did last year. Did you get a 6% raise since 2020? If not, that means you're worse off than you were last year. Inflation numbers like this keep coming up and surprising market analysts and the Federal Reserve alike. And the Fed's main mission is to keep inflation at around 2% per year. So what the heck is happening and how can you protect yourself from it? Before we dive into it, make sure you smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. Research shows that for every smash of the like button that this video receives, you get the satisfaction of knowing that you're helping support a growing channel and I get to know that you're enjoying the content. Okay. So back to inflation. If the Fed is right, you don't have to worry about inflation and next year everything should be back to normal with two to 3% inflation. Prices should settle down and your paycheck will only buy you a little less than it did this year. There's a lot of people out there who don't believe that inflation is going away. They think that next year prices could keep going up and we could see runaway prices like in the 1970s. And some people even believe that we'll see 1930s style Weimar Republic inflation. So how do we tell what's gonna happen with inflation? One indicator that is possible popular in the financial community for predicting market sentiment about inflation is the yield of the US government's 10-year treasury bond. When the 10-year treasury hit 1.7% yield back in early March, people were scared. The yield had jumped from below 1% in only a few months, but over the last four months, the 10-year yield has dropped back down to 1.3%. But what do government bonds have to do with inflation? It turns out a lot and very little. Yes, it's confusing, which is why I told you not to watch this video, remember? Treasury bonds allow the government to spend more money than they receive in tax revenue. They're how the US government issues debt. What they do is sell a bond to an individual or a company or a country. And for example, the 10 year treasury bond is an IOU stating that they'll pay the holder back a certain interest rate plus the principal in 10 years. In theory, the more in demand that the treasury bills are, the lower the interest rate that the government has to pay. The interest rate that a bond pays is called the bond's yield. When bond yields are falling, the conventional wisdom is that people trust the US government to pay back their Debt, and they also trust the stability of the currency. So if bond yields are falling, that indicates that inflation expectations are also falling. Conversely, treasury bonds can be bought and sold. Bond prices rise when inflation expectations are falling because the bond is expected to be worth more to the owner when they go to sell it, if the dollar is worth more. In summary, if bond yields are falling, it means that bond prices are rising, and that means that inflation is also expected to fall. Right now, 10-year treasury bond yields are falling, and they've been falling for four months in a row. So does does this mean that inflation is also falling? No. In the last four months, inflation, as measured by the Consumer Price Index, has risen significantly every single month. So what the heck is going on? Why are United States Treasury bonds performing well? When people are buying bonds, the yields go down. Usually, bond yields go up when people see inflation coming. Right now, inflation is definitely happening, but bond yields are dropping. But who is buying these government bonds? Prices are going up. The US government is issuing more and more debt, and the Federal Reserve is pumping more and more money into the economy through a process called quantitative easing. So if prices and the money supply are both rising, why are government bonds doing so well? And why do so many smart people think that inflation is transitory and next year we'll either see slowly rising prices or even falling prices? First, I want to try to steel man their argument for why inflation will fall next year. So you know that I'm not just trying to hide something. I really just want to know what's actually going to happen. Then I'm going to show you what I think is going to happen and why all these smart people might be missing something very important. The argument for inflation being transitory is strong. It goes like this. We've just been through a situation that is unprecedented in history, a year long economic shutdown followed by a rapid reopening. Of course, prices are going to rise temporarily, but there's too much competition for prices to keep rising long term and rapidly emerging technologies are putting massive downward pressures on the prices of many goods and services. Yes, prices of lumber, commodities like copper and oil, services like hotels and restaurants, and consumer goods like new and used vehicles have risen dramatically. But all of these price increases can be traced back to temporary supply shocks that will or have already started to ease. Prices for lumber, for example, have already come down over 30% from their highs a few months ago. According to the transitory inflationists, we could even see prices fall for many goods and services in 2022 because increased pressures from new technologies and competitors emerging in space spaces that just became much more profitable will put enough downward pressure on prices that 
things might just get cheaper, resulting in disinflation or even deflation in some industries. We've also seen money creation slow in 2021 with only a 15% growth in money supply as opposed to a 25% growth in 2020. It's a compelling story and it does align with the history of prices in technology-driven industries like computer hardware and consumer electronics. The market seemed to agree with this narrative as we've seen 10-year US Treasury bond yields fall by nearly half a percent in the last four months. But there's one thing that everyone seems to be missing. And what they're missing, I think, is the key to understand what's going to happen with prices in the coming months and years, and may also provide clues into what is happening in the US economy in general and potentially in the stock market. So get to it already. What is everyone missing? The thing that no one is talking about is who is buying the US government treasury bonds. Because yes, if foreign governments, large investment funds, and individuals are buying them, it probably would indicate confidence in the US government and in the stability of the dollar over time. But if it's someone else, who could it be? And what does it mean? In order for bond yields to be going down, a strong bond market, someone has to be buying treasuries. So who is buying US treasuries right now? Let's look at the US treasury holders by percentage. Foreign governments hold about 30% of US debt. The Fed has 22%. Mutual funds have 16%. Pension funds have 13%. Individuals have 6.5%. And state and local governments hold another 4%. All of those categories together only account for 78% of total US government debt. So who holds the rest? It turns out that the U.S. government itself, through various government agencies, holds about 22% of U.S. federal debt. But that hasn't changed much in 2021. So who is buying treasuries at a faster rate? Well, the Fed hasn't changed course. They've been buying about $260 billion in treasuries every quarter since Q2 2020, and they're not slowing yet. But overall, their percentage ownership hasn't really changed since May 2020. So why is the bond market doing so well right now? The one category that I didn't mention was banks. The evidence for what I think is happening right now won't be available for a few months, but it makes sense. Banks are required to have reserves to back up deposits, and over the the last several months, bank deposits have increased substantially. It would make sense that bank deposits are an asset for banks. For example, if I give a bank $100, that's an asset, isn't it? Actually, for the banks, your deposit is their liability. If you go to withdraw your $100, the bank needs to produce it. Because of the increase in deposits to banks and the end of COVID era allowances for reduced bank reserves, the banks need to stock up on reserves so that they have assets to back up the liabilities on deposits. But why are increasing bank reserves leading to falling bond yields? The key here is something called reverse repos. I talked about the reverse repo in my last video. A reverse repo transaction is the process by which banks and money market funds send their dollars or deposits to the Fed in exchange for an agreement to repurchase the securities at a later date. This temporarily reduces the quantity of reserve balances in the banking system. The process of money market funds or primary dealer banks putting their dollars with the Fed through the reverse repo process is quantitative tightening. It's exactly the opposite of what we talked about before in quantitative easing. Essentially, reducing the amount of dollars in the system. Having fewer dollars in circulation is a deflationary pressure. So without actually reducing asset purchases or stopping quantitative easing, by increasing the reverse repo rate, the Fed has either cleverly or accidentally caused bond yields to fall, tricking markets into thinking that deflation is coming and helping to assuage the media's inflation fears. This deflation Inflationary pressure will likely have no effect on the prices that we are all paying, but it looks to investors like inflation is slowing or reversing simply because dollars are temporarily leaving the market. The size of the Fed's balance sheet isn't changing, but they're effectively taking dollars out of circulation by forcing the banks to park their cash with the Fed. So what does this all mean for the stock market, for the broader economy, and for your portfolio? To be honest, it doesn't look great. While we may not see 10% price inflation next year, I think that price inflation will continue as more of the dollars created in 2020 chase the same resources. Does the CPI or the PCE track directly with money printing? Obviously not, but I think that it's very likely that we'll see continued rising prices in 2022 and beyond. If you wanna learn how to protect your investments from inflation, click on one of the videos linked below. For now, that's all. We'll talk to you in the next one. Peace.